This is a HeadGum Podcast. podcast where I try to figure out why I'm still single, even though you don't have to take me to dinner and I'll fuck you forever. My guests today are a couple. It's the first time I'm doing a couple. And this couple, they're my dear friends. I got to go to their wedding. It was the first time I was a bridesmaid. It truly was outstanding. I have Madeline Walter. You've seen her in lots of commercials for diarrhea and douching. And she was on my show, Loosely Exactly Nicole. And we play improv together every Sunday at 11 p.m. It used to be Franklin. It's called Search History. And her husband, Ben Green, who was in Alexander <laughs> the Horrible No Good Bad Day. What a wild introduction that was. I'm really sorry. It was Usually, great. I loved it. Usually it's a little uh, less crazy and fanatic. <laughs> I, lo- I wish everybody could see you because you were <laughs> spreading your arms Yeah, your wide. arms were flailing around. Uh, I also closed my eyes. I was in my own little world. Um, thank you so much. So, like I said, mm-hmm. you guys are married. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. got married two years ago? Two and a half ish, uh-huh. May 2015. You got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I'm really bad with dates. So ben always has to remind me every date because, because, uh, Ben is like a little bit of like a Rain Man date person. Like mm-hmm. where like he can like remember like because our an- our anniversary of when we started dating is coming up. But like Ben knows like to the out hour like oh, when we so... kissed and oh, like my God. what and I and I like can't remember like my dad's birthday. <laughs> you know, so I like just I have a hard time with remembering when a thing happened. Wait, is that real? You remember the first time like the we, hour we kissed right around twelve oh six. Oh my on... God. February 21st, the very early morning. I went to her dorm on February 20th, but then it got to be the next day. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know you knew the minute. I just know it was generally, because I was really, my heart was beating really fast. Oh my. And I was... I was like, oh, maybe I should get out of this lady's room. (laughs) If she doesn't want me to kiss her, then maybe I'm an upsetting presence. (laughs) But it turns out she did want you to kiss her. Nice. <laughs> so I would like to know. I think I know most of your history, but my podcast listeners don't. <laughs> I don't know what's what wrong with me did? today. I <laughs> I had a nap and I'm really juiced <laughs> up. <laughs> but you guys met in college, yes? Yes. And were you both single when you met? Well, yes. But, but one of the first like fun conversations we had. Well, I guess I always, I should back up. We met for the first time at um, auditions for our college's improv team. Uh, Ben (laughs) got in, I didn't. It was like my fourth time. I was like sort of a, I was not really into comedy in college, but I was kind of every now and then I would audition for this improv team Mm -hmm. and not get in. (laughs) And so we met uh, at, that audition and then but and kind of like saw each other around in the world Mm -hmm. but when i said like but to me the first time we like met with a capital m is like when we had like this was like we had a really fun cool conversation probably two years after initially well i had been madeline wrote a play that got produced on campus Mm -hmm. uh, and i got cast in a very tiny role in that play (laughs) Uh, i was boy number two (laughs) Uh, with Robert Stevens was boy number one. Uh, And that was like what really threw each other into each other's spheres. Yeah. And then a few days after that, we, we were both pursuing people. Yeah. We had a conversation, uh, in this little campus community room about how we were, I was pursuing a girl, but didn't think I was doing it well. Malin <laughs> thought she was pursuing a boy and not doing it well. Yeah. My girl is now an astronaut. Her name really? is you can look her yeah. up. Her name is Zena Cardman. Yeah, she's uh, one of the new people going to like I don't know Mars. They're gonna go to Mars. 
Wow. Yeah. So she she <laughs> oh, wanted she's me. She's an astronaut, and I fucking hate space. Which there you go. How crazy! <laughs> and you could say that she was so repulsed by me, she went away to space. <laughs> she needed to. <laughs> oh no! Uh, <laughs> Never. And you were into a boy yeah. who was a very theatery guy. Yeah, he was the assistant director of the play that I had written, and I, um, I had been in on like a long mission mm-hmm. to get him to date me and it basically was just um long <laughs> many long conversations in my dorm parking lot where he would drop me off from rehearsal and then just talk about himself for hours oh no do and you I, know where he is now is that where no like where is he oh, now is, i think he went to grad school is he an actor for or acting? like a director in san francisco like he was in san francisco as yeah. of like a year ago at least okay yeah so that's I what, like that yeah. you keep up with these people. You I know just, where they are. I need to if anybody's ever had a crush on Madeline or <laughs> Madeline's had a crush on them, I need to know where they are at all times <laughs> to make sure they don't get too close. So yeah. I was I really like this guy and he had recently this was I think maybe close to when he had emailed me a numbered list of why he wouldn't date me. He what? Really? Yes. Did you ask for it or he was just like Yes. Oh, well, I didn't ask him, give me the reasons you won't. <laughs> I, oh no, this must have been after this. Because when we, when we had this, like when we were talking about it, we were both in this funny position where we had recently had experiences with this astronaut and this assistant director <laughs> where we had been on what we thought were dates, but oh, we no. weren't sure if they were. They weren't. No. Oh no, they weren't. No. And but we had such a good time kind of commiserating over um over not knowing we were like how do you know (laughs) how could you it was breakfast and we talked a lot but then and but then like we split the check and his breakfast a day and then we were like this is fun (laughs) so how how often were you guys talking before you were like i'm gonna go to her room and i'm gonna kiss her a finite number of times. Do you want to say? So we had, yeah. yeah. So we talked about how we had crushes on people, and we were like, "Oh, we should continue this conversation over lunch." So mm-hmm. I swiped Madeline up to lunch in the dining hall. Uh, she was very yeah. impressed that I gave her one of her swipes. One of my swipes. I was hungry and ready. what does that mean? I didn't go to real college. Oh, <laughs> in the in like a college dining hall, like you get like when you get a meal plan, uh-huh. you like pay a certain amount of money, and you get like ten meals a week or whatever, oh. and so you can like. You swipe to go up, and then it's like all you can eat. So there's no all you can eat. College is a buffet. Uh, Honestly, yes. (laughs) Top of Lenore at UNC is a buffet. I should have gone to college. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Oh, is that why people gain the freshman fifteen? Because there's a buffet everywhere. (laughs) Correct. Often. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I went to school with no meal plan. We had to fend for ourselves. <laughs> oh, right, because you were in... It was a pretend school. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it, they just, like, let us loose in New York. It was wild. I ate a lot of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, so did everyone else in college, but they would eat, like, pizza and then go to, like, the cereal bar and then the ice cream bar <gasps> and then a, like, carving station. I, I was... When I went to college, I was on the Atkins diet, so I would just eat... All, I would go to the pizza station and were just eat fat? all the cheese. No, was I was crazy. that a rude question? No, no. Um, that's not rude. I wasn't fat. I was, I had lost my mind. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so we had this, like this great lunch at the dining hall. Yeah. Where we really hit it off and realized we had amazing chemistry we'd never known about. Yeah. And then asked, do you want to go to, I asked Madeline if she wanted to go to lunch the next week. Yeah. We did another lunch. Yeah. And then I said, do you want to do it again the next week? And she said, I can't do it the next week, but should we do it, go to dinner instead? And so we went to that dinner, and we were still hitting it off a lot. And, then- and he paid for me, which was really exciting because oh. we had, had this whole bit about, like, how do you know when it's a date? And we mm-hmm. kind of decided – it like, felt like a very, like, funny, sophisticated bit for two, like, college students, you know? <laughs> we were, like – and we decided, like, oh, you know it's a date if, if someone pays for you. And so, like, mm-hmm. when he, like, you know, took out his, like, d- you know, debit card or whatever and, like, paid for my Vietnamese food, <laughs> I um I was, like – yeah, I know That's what that means. So sweet. <laughs> um, uh. It was nuts. It was like this insane surprise because I was a senior, 
and Ben was a sophomore. And Wait, I. Wait, you're younger? Yes. Yeah, I was two years younger. I still am. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You met, yeah. you <laughs> caught up to her. Now you're the same age. That's wild. I had no idea yeah. that you were younger. Yeah. And we were both, we were, I, we were also very different from each other, yeah. especially mm-hmm. back then. Yeah. Like, I, I was kind of like a, kind of campus hobo-y kind of guy. I, like, carried all my stuff in a suitcase, <laughs> which was really weird. Uh, there are, like, kind of famous stories I don't love about me wearing uh, bags on my feet when I d- didn't, uh, <laughs> when I misplaced my shoes at a party. <laughs> uh, I often wore overalls with no shirt underneath them. So, and then Madeline was, like, Why? a very... <laughs> Why? I thought it was cool at the time. <laughs> I <laughs> so wait, were you drunk when you had bags on your feet? Well, I uh, no, I <laughs> was just going to the movies, but <laughs> I was drunk when I misplaced my shoes at the party. Okay, uh, I, <laughs> I, I went had to the one pair of shoes. It was with Josh Sharp. You're you know Josh. I Sharp. love Josh Sharp, and and I just yeah, I had left my shoes at this party, and so I needed something to go to. <laughs> so I and it really. In terms of being utilitarian, putting Ziploc bags over my feet and then te- putting rubber bands over the like little area to keep them on was very effective. That's I just and I the wildest thing I I've back, ever heard. Back then, I cared way less what people thought of me, um, and then Fair. and then uh, learned maybe I should care just a lick more. <laughs> but I'm so sorry to not drop this. Why didn't you borrow shoes from Josh? I was like, oh, don't trouble yourself. <laughs> I'll wear bags on my feet. Honestly, I would kill to see you in present day in overalls with no shirt on and bags on your feet. It would make me so pleased. It might become my new fashion. I love it <laughs> Just to fully so become my, my truest self. If you scroll back through Facebook, you can find a, a shirtless overall pic of Ben. He's like crouching in a fountain. He like <laughs> truly <laughs> looks like a troll from the forest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, I need that troll. <laughs> and I was like a, I was like a business lady. I was like, oh. you know how I'm like a, maybe like a little too buttoned up now. Multiply sure. that. But I guess it like now it's kind of like sometimes like a bit persona that I have. Mm-hmm. Like imagine multiply that by 20. Like I was like, you would have met, if you met me in college, you would have assumed I was a 40 year old woman <laughs> is that does that feel accurate yeah people in high school like mistook you for the substitute teacher yeah that's true so, <laughs> that's great you could have catched me if you could you could have oh yeah i could i could have catched <laughs> i got you what could. you were saying yeah. you could have catched me if i could <laughs> so that was a good movie um so do you think you guys so you seem very much like polar opposites we were so, we somebody thought when ben told i'd maybe josh or reed that we were dating they were like are you sure hmm. she's not joking because we seemed so great i yeah, was like yeah nobody ever it never crossed anybody's mind like those two should be together no the, we're we're very polar opposites on like paper yeah and then it just turned out what we learned in these first conversations is that like we spoke more the same language than anybody mm-hmm. else we'd ever met yeah like we we just like started to realize like we understood each other and we fit together really well yeah. and complimented each other really well. It was insane. It was like I felt like when we like first had lunch and it was like truly not even supposed to be a little bit romantic. I was like, oh, I feel like I have known this guy forever. It was Aww. nuts. That's really sweet. <laughs> it's making me crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's like so obnoxious to come uh, on, like, yeah. to come on to a podcast like this and be like, and then we just felt like we had met each other a hundred uh, years ago. <laughs> but I, it's true. I feel like we're those old couples from the beginning of Harry Met Sally. Yeah. <laughs> Throughout that movie, yeah. I just watched it on a plane, and I'll tell you something: it's good. Uh, it's a good movie. <laughs> I truly liked it. I was like, "Why did I see this earlier?" And the reason is, I don't know. I was too busy just watching Ghost over and over and over again. <laughs> Do you guys have like bad fights? I don't think I've ever seen you mad at each other. Not a lot. I guess it's it's interesting when you were just saying, uh, like we were talking about yeah. this beautiful like beginning of our story. Yeah, yeah. So I will say that we did have one big fight, yeah. like uh, th- about three months in, when Madeline tried to break up with me. 
Uh, she wow. had given she had given me yeah. permission to get drunk, or I had, I had said well, like I think I might get drunk tonight. Is that okay mm-hmm. with you? And she said yes, and but she just didn't know what. A sloppy maniac I become when I'm uh-huh. drunk, and and this was uh, like somebody who like wears bags on his feet when he's sober. I mean, like <laughs> it's not like I sound really uptight, but also like truly, I was already dating like like a waiting for Godot character. <laughs> like, My, I'm very much a street screamer when I'm drunk. Uh, is uh-huh. the, <laughs> uh, one time so, you like stole a bunch of our friends' pet uh, toys when you were drunk? I got kicked out of a gay bar in San Francisco uh, oh, for no. for being. Being too rowdy. Um, really? What were you uh, doing? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's almost too lewd to say. I was. <laughs> did I mean, you pull the, your dick? I out? think the the biggest thing. Did I pull my dick out? No, I didn't. <laughs> I did have a. Uh, I please. I'm sorry to, if my parents listen to this. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I, this is a this is a bad story. But I had a butt plug that was shaped like a <laughs> that was shaped like a dick that uh. I. I guess I maybe put where my dick would be hanging out of my pants. Oh, no. And I had I had gotten so like wildly drunk at this party that I left, went to a sex shop, bought it as a bit, <laughs> and then brought it back there. And I was and then I was also like climbing the walls. I had oh. it was just because we had been at a bottomless mimosas breakfast okay. where I just lost my mind. So sure that and, happens. <laughs> I think that's. Very funny. But so a version of this happened three months into our relationship, Mm -hmm. uh, less sexually charged. (laughs) And Madeline, it turned out, didn't like what she saw. No. Um, I was like, what have I done? Oh, no. (laughs) I'm a business lady. (laughs) How did I pick up this crazy hobo? (laughs) And she said, uh, I think I might be falling out of love with you. I can't believe I I I don't remember (laughs) saying that. And every time you remind me, it makes my. Every time you remind me. It makes me feel. Horrible. And I burst into tears and I said, I don't think you're being fair to me oh. or, or to what we have. Like, this is bigger than that. This is like, you're, I think you're just scared. Yeah. I think because Malin had never done a relationship for more than three months no. up till that point. Oh, no. so it was like three months up. I found something wrong with you. I'm going to break up with you. More that for, I never had met anybody who I, I had never been in any kind of like relationship where I didn't know from the very beginning that like it wasn't gonna last mm-hmm. like you know there was just like I had never met I had met like you know everybody who I had dated had been like perfectly like nice and cool mm-hmm. and interesting but it was just this like gut feeling that I had where I was like you're not my person and because I was like in college and such an idealist and such a perfectionist I just didn't I like the idea of settling felt insane to me. And so mm-hmm. I was always like, I can't live a lie anymore. Uh, <laughs> I We're going to need to break up. Did you ever get broken up with or did you do most of the breaking? Oh, you know, I didn't. I never got broken up with, but I got like rejected plenty. Ah, uh, OK. Yeah. How many relationships have you had prior to Madeline? I had one big one before Madeline that was like a year and a half, mm-hmm. um, but I was it was really like high school to college, one of those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I had many like two month like uh, little flings uh, throughout my high school. I did very I cleaned up at theater arts camp. Um, <laughs> I was the uh, I, I'm. I'm still pretty gay, but I was the, <laughs> the least gay <laughs> of everybody. And uh, that did really well for me uh, at theater arts camp. I, I got uh. girls that were way prettier than what I should be dating. Oh, stop it. I don't believe in leagues and stuff like that where people are like, they're out of my league. I'm like, I mean, people are people, right? It's insane. It's you like, like what you yeah. like. Yeah. That's very nice. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. And I was a prude, so nobody – like, I was just telling – since it was Valentine's Day yesterday, we were, like, sharing Valentine's Day stories, and I was remembering my eighth grade – my first, boy, like, quote-unquote boyfriend in eighth mm-hmm. grade broke up with me because I told him I wasn't ready to kiss yet. I love that. It was, like – and just, like, apply that. And I was, like, the same in college. Like, I was just, like, a straight up uh, – like, I think I had just – become fearful like the gravity of sex mm-hmm. had really been like like beat into me and that was like you know like that nobody likes that like i yeah. like remember, like people would think i was very religious or something no yeah. well sex when, is a scary thing when yeah. me and madeline started dating she was saving herself for marriage 
Uh, and that lasted it for was. a long time. How long? <laughs> Two years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you were very patient. It was That's great. Yeah. Very nice of you. Yeah, it was very yeah. nice. Of was you. that was very insane of me? Yes, it was very frustrating. <laughs> but it was very worth waiting for. Um, um, yeah. Oh, and just to like circle back on this time, I, the one time I tried to break up with Ben, um, it was like sort of over a weekend. So it mm-hmm. like started on like a Friday when he got drunk and I was like, uh oh. And then it was also like, it was like that experience, like a little bit mixed with the fact that I had like never met anybody who felt, who I didn't immediately know was like not for me. Like he, he, this was the first person I'd ever met who I was like, oh, I don't see an end in sight for this. Mm-hmm. Like, and so that was like really scary. Um, and then the cool thing that he did that really, I think, like, in the back of my mind, I knew we weren't actually going to break up. Like, mm-hmm. um, but then also it was just so cool how, like, we had, like, a more reasonable kind of sober conversation about it. Like, a, you know, somewhere across that weekend. And Ben had – was, like, I just – he basically gave me a hard pitch for, like mm-hmm. – like, he basically was, like, I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong that this is not special. And – and he was, like, really nice about it. You know, it wasn't, like, overly aggressive. Mm-hmm. But I remember going to coffee with, like, my best friend Michelle and being like, I just think it's really cool <laughs> that he <laughs> had the balls to, like, to basically question my judgment on this and, like, to fight <laughs> me on this. I thought it was really cool. And I was like, and I think he's right <laughs> now in 2018 you're not allowed to do that anymore <laughs> you've yes, got to take no for yeah. well, an answer i think if i i think that's a little too extreme i yeah. think if someone's breaking up with you you could be like no yeah i think about it for yeah. a little bit i think that's yes, okay i think absolutely yeah. Yeah, he wasn't like no <laughs> no you know. you're not gonna go anywhere <laughs> yeah he's you're just like, mine <laughs> no you're gonna wear ziploc bags on yeah. your feet and i'm gonna <laughs> keep you in the basement <laughs> you're you're absolutely right yeah, yeah. I, I just appreciate i mean it's like i made my I case for me still appreciate about our relationship is that like you're like uh, like, I feel, I don't feel more, supp- I feel like the most supported by you, you know, like more than anybody else in the world. But also, like, you will tell me if you think I'm wrong about something. Like, it's not, it's like unconditional love, but not unconditional agreement, which is like, which I think is maybe one of the coolest things that you've brought to our relationship, like, from the beginning. And vice versa. Yeah. Your relationship works like the government. It seems like there's a lot of checks and balances. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're so pleased with me. I love it. Um, yeah, to answer your original question of how, how much do we fight, mm-hmm. we have many quick fights. Yes. Because we always are telling each other, like anything that we bump up against, yeah. we tell each other right away because mm-hmm. we don't like to have any passive aggression or things that like stick around for a while. Yeah. I think that's smart. Although hard. Yeah. It is. uh, I try to not hold things in my heart anymore. Yeah. This is like a very new thing for this year where Mm. I'm like, if you're making me upset, I'm going to try to tell you immediately. Yes. Instead of letting it like fester than like blowing up at somebody. Okay. We have to take a real quick commercial break, (laughs) but we'll be back and we're going to talk some more. Here's a question. What is Care Slash Of? Care Of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly, I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It can be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. a lot of people that's almost all the people they fall short of the fda recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient also 
The recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit TakeCareOf.com. The promo code is date me. What a treat. You'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time. Bye bye. And we're back. What a dream of a break. <laughs> uh, so you guys got together in college, which was yeah. 1,000 years ago. 1,000 years ago. Um, so actually, you... 11 years ago in like five days. Yeah. But you've been together for 11 years. Yes. Imagine if you started having sex right then and there. You could have an 11-year-old, right? No. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Isn't that terrifying to yes. think about? I don't yes. fucking want kids. They're fucking disgusting. I know. Um, so you guys completely missed the boat on online dating. Oh, a thousand percent. When I wrote, like, the most I knew about online dating was a guy I had dated before Ben's mom was online dating. And, like, we went to his house and looked at her online dating profile <laughs> on her desktop computer. And then you went, goodbye, online <laughs> yeah. dating. I don't want you. Yeah, I met a girl online. Uh, I shouldn't have met up with her, but in high school, I met a girl on Instant Messenger. <gasps> on uh, AIM? <laughs> How did I you met meet? Like with. in a chat room? Uh I yeah, like I met her in a chat room. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> we met in like uh Grand Central Station at a wow, table. Wow, that's could have crazy. Gone. Public space. That's was crazy. she yes. like what she said she was? Yes. Oh, that's she nice. was, but it was still very strange. That is that's <laughs> scary. I don't, but not scary. I meet people from Tinder all the time. But AIM, could you? You can't send pictures on AIM, could you? Yeah, you. Could. Oh, you could. Uh huh. I used to catfish people on AIM. Really? My screen name was Hot Chocolate Eight Hundred Eight. <laughs> And when they go A S L H sex location, I'd be like, 29, female, Jersey, and I've got big, big boobies. <laughs> <laughs> and what picture would you send? Did you uh, send I would never send a oh, picture. Okay. I would so just they be just like, were expecting this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I would like, I guess it was sexting. I'd be like, I'm going to put your penis in my mouth and suck on it. <laughs> yeah, that is. That and is then insane. they'd be like, and what else? And I'm like, <gasps> honestly, I don't know. I'm 15, I, not 15, but like. I don't know, like 13, 12. I was, How I did you, when did you first have sex? I, uh, late. I think I was 19. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't know if I've said it on the podcast, but I lost it in a bathroom of an Indian restaurant that I later got hired at. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you not know that? I don't think I knew that. <laughs> Very, very dumb. Uh, it was with this man named Elvis. <laughs> the first Elvis I slept with, and then I slept with another Elvis later. Oh, no. Life is very dumb. <laughs> Did he say Elvis has left the building uh, when he... <laughs> no, I no, wish he, he had. Must have, he must have felt like... Uh, uh, <laughs> no, he didn't. But also, I was very, very, very drunk. Uh, then the second Elvis was a cocaine dealer. <laughs> I was like, I want free cocaine. And I think if you have sex with a drug dealer, that's what you get. Did you get free cocaine? No, I didn't. Oh. I still had to pay. No. Oh, that's bad. I keep trying to have sex for free things and they make me pay anyway. I had sex with a cab driver and he still made me pay. You had sex with a cab driver while he was driving you? <laughs> well, Did he no, keep we, the meter like, on? We, we uh, pulled over. It was a gypsy cab, so there was oh. no meter. And your first mistake. he still made me pay. I can't he was believe like, he made you pay. twenty dollars, oh, and I was like, terrible. Um, but isn't my vagina priceless? <laughs> that is great. You were like it's an very rude. opposite rude. hooker. Yeah, <laughs> I am an opposite hooker. I sleep with people, then I have to pay for things. <laughs> oh, I'm doing it wrong. I want you to look at my Tinder profile. Um, oh, here's a story about a man that I just met. We matched on Tinder. Mm -hmm. And we had a very dumb conversation 
because every we would message every couple of days and I would forget what he said before. So then I would just be like, how did you know this? And, and he like stopped answering me. So then we matched on Hinge and then he was like, what's your number? So I gave him my number and then he immediately FaceTimed me. <gasps> He FaceTimed Thank you. Thank you. I was with Sashir. I am like, terrified answer. when like somebody I've known for years FaceTimes <laughs> Yes. Me. And I feel like you should text someone first and be like, can I FaceTime you? Yes. You don't just FaceTime someone out of the blue. No. So I answered it, but I left my phone <laughs> like pointing at the ceiling because I was like, maybe it was a mistake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then his face appeared and he was like, hello. <gasps> hello. And I was like, oh, no. So then I hung up and then he texted and he's like, I'm trying to FaceTime time you and I was like oh he's like literally trying to talk to me so then we FaceTimed while I was at Little Dom's and so she like put a light on my face and then he was like your hair is long and I was like uh-huh and he's like I I'm at a Knicks game or I don't know who's a the Lakers one yeah. of those LA Lakers, basketball Clippers, whatever maybe it was Clippers I don't know but then we had like a non-conversation you from a basketball game yeah with his like female friend who was like I'm so drunk and not you're pretty it was so strange and then huh. he never contacted me again that's online dating. That's what it is. Everyone's Sounds a fucking terrible. freak. That's it crazy. It is awful. What was he expecting from that transaction? I truly don't know. Huh. And I felt insane. And so she was like, I like him. I think he's bold. And I could only, I was, he's not bold. He's insane. Yeah. He's a crazy person. Maybe a okay. chat roulette kind of guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember chat roulette? <laughs> Okay. I just remember they did one chat roulette show at UCB, and it oh, was just yeah. like so many dicks up on that That's screen. That's all chat roulette yeah. is. Okay, look at my. Okay. Uh, very excited to look at this. I've yeah. I've looked at these pictures before too. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this podcast, so I'm always looking at these pictures on Facebook. Nicole, are I you 28? It. No, oh. I don't. I think I changed my. Okay, so it says 28. Yeah. I'm 31, I think, and. That's I what put, I thought. I, was, I, I was like, I remember you're 30th. I know I'm thir I know I'm past 30. I was born in 1986. I think you are 31. I'm 32 now? No, I'm 31. You'll be 32 in August? Yes. Yeah. That's Thank you it. for keeping up. Because we were going to go to Belize for your 30th. Yes. But we and <laughs> because it was cheap Kazika and mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. and then it got canceled. Ah, uh, so sad. Oh, but if you are listening and you want to see the pictures that Madeline and Ben are looking at, you can go to facebook.com and it's on my uh, my Facebook page. It's Nicole Byer backslash comedy, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Nice. Uh, oh, it's in the description. Click on the link in the description. So, yeah, so baby. We're looking at this picture of you holding a dildo. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And every and that's a very controversial picture, right? Everybody has a different opinion yes. about it. A lot of people say uh, it's bad. I'm sending the wrong message. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, but it shows that you <laughs> like dicks and you're fun. Where where have you come out on this right now? Like, how are you feeling about this dildo picture? Um, I like it, and I haven't removed it because I feel like it's jarring enough to your eyeballs that you're like, oh, I'm curious to see what else this lady has. Yes, I think that's it. I think my biggest concern with it is that I've heard you say recently that you're not looking for one night stands, and this Correct. picture. I feel like almost communicates somebody who might be looking for one night stands. Mm. Uh, is it what do you disagree or agree, Madeline? <sighs> you know, I'm really I'm torn on this dildo pit because like my first instinct is like live your life, do whatever you want. <laughs> it's so loaded. It, it well, you know, can I actually the thing that makes me like agree with you ben that it looks a little one night standy is your face looks so sexy thank you it doesn't you. look it like almost looks like you don't think it's funny to have this big dildo oh. it almost like because like because you look like it's like such a sultry look it almost looks like you're like hey daddy <laughs> <laughs> you know like uh like oh, that it, it almost... wild coming out of your mouth <laughs> hey daddy like, isn't that disgusting to hear me say that i liked it um like that, it's almost like if you were like, had like a, isn't this wild face? Mm, yeah, it might I, be a little bit I better. agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Because is the biggest point of that photo to show that you're like funny and fun? Yes. And, because, and if, yes. I moved it to like 
maybe the third or fourth picture and I wasn't getting as many matches. Oh, interesting. So oh. then I moved it back and then the matches started happening again. Were, did the type of people who matched with you change at all when Dildo wasn't front and center? When the Dildo wasn't front and center, I was getting no matches. And I went three days with no matches and I was going insane. I was just swiping right on everybody and I wasn't matching with anybody. Which one did you change to your first? Uh, if you keep swiping, there's a pink wall picture. I love that pic. That was the first one. And then I thought maybe guys would see that and think, oh, she's wearing overalls and she looks like a child. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Well, you can't see your face. Have you seen this pic, Ben? This overall pic? You know, the thing that is nice about the dildo pic is it's such a nice shot of your – like you can like see your face more. Like the mm. overall pic, like it's – you're wearing sunglasses. Yeah. You know, and like it's maybe you can't – I don't know. Mm -hmm. Can't see enough of like – Hey, here's what I look like if you're not far away from me. <laughs> yeah. Would you do an experiment sometime? Would okay. you ever uh, f have somebody Photoshop this picture of you uh, holding a dildo and make the dildo like have like sunglasses and like <laughs> <laughs> a mouth and or something and see okay. how, how people react That's then? That's a great idea. Or just like take up like the com like like kind of like, like take down the sex comedy? shop kind of thing okay. of it and make it like even funnier i, I could probably do that on it i could probably do that on an instagram story because they you could put sunglasses on things and then i'll screenshot it i'll do it i know I, how to do it i would just be because i agree it's such a good picture of you thank uh, you other than like the, the dildo has all these implications everybody's talked about sure yeah i love i love the idea of putting sunglasses on that dildo it's funny i think i'm gonna do it and then people will be like ha 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 that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> when it, it like makes you it like it's like a little bit of that thing of like when you write a sketch, like you have to state the game so clearly up mm -hmm. top just in case anybody's a little dense and like <laughs> won't pick up on it. So I feel like you almost need to like state the game of that photo a little the bit. Game more is it silly? To be like the game is like I know this is funny, not that like I just think this is like a hundred percent honest in me <laughs> right i guess i'm also like whose vagina wants that but then i guess there are some people out there who would love to take a dildo that big yeah, yeah. i i, I would, forget about things might, like that i think other people have said this but i would look at that picture and think like oh I guess I need to have a really big dick mm -hmm. um instead of just thinking like i guess i need to be really funny but here's the thing you do have to have a big dick. <laughs> I don't want no little dick. Do no. you really yeah, want so no it's... little dick? No, or I if, don't. Like, I th feel like people have talked about it on the podcast, but I, maybe I haven't heard enough conversations about it. Yeah, like, is is that, like, where is that on your list of sort of deal breakers? Um, If you're interesting and you're funny and I feel something, then it doesn't matter. But okay. if you're just real dumb and... I just don't feel anything, but I'm like bored and I'm going to keep going out with you. Then you have to have a big dick. So it sounds like it to me. That actually sounds like it doesn't matter that much. Oh, I guess it doesn't. For someone I want to date forever. Mary. Yes, that's dating forever. Yeah. Someone I'd want to marry. <laughs> sure Sometimes Ben will be like, my girlfriend. And I'll be like, your wife. And then I'll be like, oh, it's the same. <laughs> yeah, just it your is the same. I'm just your forever girlfriend. <laughs> it's the yeah. same. My forever um, girlfriend. I just want to be someone's yeah. forever girlfriend. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it sounds like it actually Maybe it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. But it's, it's something I would like. Like if I met yeah. a man who was really, really nice... I guess it truly, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Because if I ended up with a woman, she yeah. wouldn't have... Well, I guess she could wear a strap on. Sure. But then... I and guess, even so could a man with a little dick. Yes. <laughs> this is a great point, Malin. It, <laughs> <laughs> it is actually a very good point. Yeah. I guess if a dick wasn't satisfying to me, we could just shop around and find a bigger one. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Yeah, you can find anything to put inside you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I, like, honestly. <laughs> That's the best piece of advice I've ever gotten. Right. You can find it's... anything to put inside of you. <gasps> yeah, that should never be a reason to say no because of strap-ons. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, it's because because it's like I appreciate that you say that, like, because mm -hmm. I think it's like a really it's a nice way to speak because I think it like 
uh, like says like, hey, it's okay as women for us to like say what we want mm-hmm. sexually. And it's like okay for us to kind of speak about men the way that like we're used to hearing women mm-hmm. being spoken about. Like, cause it's like so common for us to be like, uh, I'm a tits guy. I'm a butt guy. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like when you say like, I want a big dick, the subtext is actually like, hey, feminists, like mm-hmm. we can speak like this about men. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's cool about it. Thank you. But I also think that's what you mean more than I actually want a big dick. It's a deal breaker. Maybe. Uh, I think you're right. I think you're actually very right. I don't think it's an actual, actual deal breaker. And uh, I was on, you know, I was on Conan, uh, Mm -hmm. but maybe podcast listeners don't. But I got to be on Conan and he asked me if I was single and I said I wanted a big dick. And then they put it on YouTube, the segment, Mm -hmm. and there's like a bunch of comments that were like, huh, wow, this is hurting the Me Too uh, campaign, or not campaign, but like yeah. the Me Too movement. That's not. And then it was like, huh, I can't believe women get to talk like this now. And all uh. I could think was, but men have been speaking like this for yeah. so long. Yeah. So until we've had decades of women speaking like this, like, it, it's fine. Yeah. We should, like, have a little bit of, like, equal opportunity objectification. <laughs> yes. Like, and that always is how I have heard it coming mm-hmm. from you like that always is what is how I've interpreted that thank you um but I wonder if I'm like a little bit of two minds because part of me wants to say like hey if someone you date can't sort of understand that and hear it and kind of mm-hmm. hang with it then like f- you know fuck them but also part of me wonders whether that's like confusing messaging and whether somebody might take you at your word and think like, oh boy, well, I have kind of a little dick mm-hmm. and I'm nice, but like I can't give this person what they want. Sure. But like, not to keep going back to Conan, the yeah. show I was on, but uh, I think I was like, I was like, I want a big dick, but also he could be nice. Nice comes last, yeah. which is like obviously a joke. It's a little bit of that same state your game thing. It's like mm-hmm. people... I understand that, and I think you probably do, yeah, too. And again, I would hope anybody who would be like a potential partner for you would be like on the level that they could understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wonder if people always do, though. I don't know. I don't want to be with a literal dummy no. who's like, you sent this and yeah, like, that's I don't what understand you mean. satire. <laughs> yeah. But I guess with these dating apps, you need to be like so clear so fast. For people's initial You're impressions right. of for you. For two people so who've can't never be. been on a dating app, you seem to really understand them. <laughs> Maybe that's why. We have like we sort of a clinical distance from it. <laughs> and I'm just really in the thick of it. I'm literally on, I think I'm on six apps right now. And they're all terrible. I've talked about this one before, but it's called Coffee Meets Bagel. And people are like, get on that one. That's like where nice men are, mm. where they really want relationships. But... You have to, like, gather beans and then spend the beans on people. And I was like, this is, this is, you're making me feel goofy. Like, I have to gather beans. How do you get the beans? You have to play a game where you like pictures. What? And then it gives you one bean per picture. And you need, like, 300 beans to like somebody. Okay, wait. What kind of pictures? Is it unrelated? Like, they're just there. It'll be like, which picture is better of this person, this one or this one? And then you tap the one that you think is better and it gives you a percentage because everyone has to play these games to get more beans or you can buy beans. And I don't want to buy any beans and I don't understand why there's beans involved. Uh, that is baffling. It's crazy. I think I'm going to look for a fat lady. Uh, oh, no, I was on this fat lady one. Oh, shit. What was the name of that one? I don't know, but the only people who would message me were like very old men from Glendale, <gasps> and I didn't understand why it was all in Glendale. Oh, yeah. It was like only old, old, old men who were like, hello, <laughs> I like your curves. Oh. I don't know what they sounded like, but that's what it felt like. It was very <laughs> aggressive. Why not buy beans? You can afford beans. Uh, I can afford beans. But... Like, I don't know why you wouldn't do like all the premium, the most <laughs> premium versions of these apps to like give yourself like the best like ch- shot of the app working for you. That is good. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it sounds like it's on principle that you're not doing kind it, of. But, but it's one of those things that, uh, like, 
I well, I kind of went through this with this game Word Chums that I was playing, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> where it it doesn't really matter, but you can like buy your character like clothes with points you've gotten from spelling words correctly Uh and uh (laughs) me and my parents were playing it uh uh, from you know virtually and we were all spending so much time trying to earn these clothes and at some point we realized it was just smart to spend a little bit of money to buy our characters clothes i don't think this makes the point (laughs) well but but picture that instead of caring about clothing your virtual character Characters you cared about uh, finding your soulmate. Uh, I might buy some beans in this app. Oh, I, but I feel like if I buy beans, then I'm gonna be buying other things. Like I don't know what Bumble has, and then Tinder also has like Tinder Plus. So then I'll be spending like fifty bucks a month trying to find somebody. That sounds sad. Well, I don't know. I think it's this. I think it's the same. I think it's like. It well, it seems good to me because this seems like a big priority for you right now. So yeah, if it's a big doing priority, a whole podcast yeah. about it. If it's a big priority for you, I would spend fifty dollars a month. I mean, I spend fifty dollars a month on far stupider things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was spending it on the Adobe Cloud suite of apps <laughs> that I didn't even use for the last year. Wait, what's uh, Adobe? <laughs> you know, like Photoshop. Oh, do you know how to Photoshop? I do. Will and you I Photoshop was... sunglasses on that penis? Oh yes, my gosh. Nicole. Yeah! Thank you so much for asking me. Oh, that's so fun. You, uh, could, you should mock up a bunch of different versions of that funny penis. Nicole, I'm going to send you so many different <laughs> oh, versions. <laughs> Maybe oh, that'll you. just be my only picture, just different. <laughs> that's honestly, it's not a bad idea. But um, anyway, you think that's yeah. that's not crazy to spend that much no, money a month, No, because right? I also like wonder if it's, like again, like a little bit of a psychological thing mm-hmm. where it's like you're sort of – it's like that thing of like – Maybe like it, I don't I don't know if it's like a cousin to self sabotage where it's like maybe. you're like maybe just stopping short of doing everything you can to like just like you know you're worth fifty you're worth fifty bucks a month you know <laughs> Thank like, you. there's like no reason you shouldn't spend fifty bucks a month if it makes this thing that you want maybe a little easier to get and then if it isn't then cancel the premium shit and throw it out the window you're right i just want to like walk down the street and have a man be like you are somebody (laughs) i want and then i want them to like look nice and then say nice things after yeah that would just be ideal i want that for you too i feel like that also probably is what will happen in the end i hope so or it will be you talking to them first uh because a lot of like great guys are also uh, scaredy cats who <laughs> mm. need you to. You, you talked about this in, I think, the Jacob episode. He mm-hmm. like you were talking about more about like talking to people in supermarkets, and he gave you great advice on oh, that. Oh, that was George. Oh, George. George, Cameron, George yeah. talked. To, okay, I've I felt like that trying. was good advice. Yes, I had a man hit on me in the supermarket, and I didn't realize he was hitting on me until he was like, "What's that?" And I was like, "Peanut butter." <laughs> <laughs> Because he asked me what the little, I buy cold brews. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what are those? And I was like, oh, cold brew. And he's like, what's cold brew? And I was like, oh, it's coffee that's brewed cold. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. And then it was like a lull. Then he was like, uh, wh- what's that? And I was like, peanut butter. And he's like, it's a, it's a, it's in an interesting jar. And I was like, oh, I think this man is just trying to like keep up a conversation with me. Yeah. So then I was like trying to be flirty. But then I saw his fingernails and I was like, yucky. They're, oh, they're dirty. Bad. I don't like dirty nails because I always think about what if you're fingering me and you like do it too hard and then you cut me and then the dirt from your nails gets into my body and then I get like tetanus. It's a great point. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) I have a question for you as a couple. (laughs) Sure. You're both in comedy. Uh Do you ever feel like you're competing against each other? That's such a good question. Where? Uh, n- so no. So the answer is no, but it's, um, but I, it's like a, but I feel like it's something um, sort of having the luxury of being in a relationship for such a long time has given us a lot of practice in learning sort of that everybody has their sort of peaks and valleys and mm-hmm. like the accomplishments that they're making, you know, and, and. Do, do you want to – I feel like you were going to say something. I cut you off. 
Uh, I guess the fun thing is that when Madeline has a success, I really do get excited, almost like it's something that I've done. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the fun thing about yeah. uh, caring about somebody yeah. so much. Uh, I think where it gets bad is that it uh, Madeline's had times where she's like successful enough in my eyes that she'll then complain about something that's happened that hasn't gone her way. Mm -hmm. And I've had the like sensibility of like, you're not allowed to complain. Like mm -hmm. I'm doing so much worse. <laughs> it's insulting for you to just be feeling your feelings. And mm -hmm. that's where it gets bad is like, because I, you can, you should always like, I should always be able to like feel bad for Madeline if she's feeling yeah. bad for herself. And I and I'm also a real whiner too. Like I like <laughs> I like one like one of um you know, I there's a lot of things that are is that are that's great about me and one of the annoying things about me is like I I just am a little bit of a whiner. So things like kind of inversely like there have been periods where like things have been like going really well for Ben and I've been in like a little bit of a career rut and like I feel like I'm always like, nothing nice will ever happen <laughs> for me again. <laughs> and like, Ben is very indulgent of that. But, and then also, though, after being together for 11 years, now kind of I know like if I ever have that feeling, it's like just a feeling and it will pass. And we will mm -hmm. like always be kind of like alternating who f like – who is like a little bit ahead or a little bit, you know, like in a little bit of a slump because just kind of cause our, this business goes in such peaks and valleys. Um, so I wouldn't say, yeah, so competitive is not the word. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more like just we've had to really practice and learn not to like compare our trajectories. Uh, Does you that, guys, yeah. yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You guys have a very healthy relationship. Have you ever gone to couples therapy? Is that very personal? Can I not no, ask that? No, it's not very personal. No, we haven't. Um, but and I just started going to regular therapy, mm -hmm. and um, then that's kind of all. I haven't been in it long enough to have anything else interesting to say. <laughs> <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I, I wish I did. Yeah, yeah. Wait um, a couple months, so then you'll yeah. have breakthroughs, and you're like, yeah. oh god. But I missed therapy today because I wanted to nap. <laughs> And I didn't call her, and she called me, and I didn't answer. <laughs> but I'll call her tomorrow, and I'll say, sorry, Mary, I was sleeping. <laughs> and then she'll go, I understand, in a tone where I'm like, but it's annoying. Because <laughs> you could have booked somebody else. Um, here's a question. Um, I know you guys are married, but if you weren't, would you date me? Great question. Uh, we already talked about this yeah. between each other, <laughs> yes. and uh, you'll be happy to know that we both decided that we would date yes. you. Oh, <laughs> what a dream! <laughs> Thank uh, you. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to go first? No, you, For you go first. I have monopolized too much of this. Well, I just, I mean, personally, I feel like there's so much about you that I like so much. Uh, that why wouldn't we give it a try? Like, I I feel like I would be really excited to. Like, I, I love that part of your um, profile that's, like, about how much you like to have fun. And I feel like that would be very charming to me if I were single. Um, and, yeah, I feel like we could uh, just... I, I would love to like see if we're compatible, like, and give it like a month of dating and then see where we were at that time. Ben, I would definitely date you because I think we would get wild together. It's, I really like the story about you wearing bags on your feet. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I feel like we're interestingly like alike in a lot of ways. You and I? Yeah. I agree. It, that I, I feel like we could have a real party and I feel like the I think the interesting thing for us would be like me and Madeline like very much balance each other out in a lot of ways, yeah. and I could see like us being like two kids who broke into a car together, uh, and like are just going on a, a wild trip. Uh -huh. uh, and yeah. I it would be interesting to see. I don't think we would last though. I think we would burn each other out. I think so. Like, but I also, uh, in defense of our made up relationship. <laughs> I think I think we're both pretty smart and I think okay. we would like be good at adapting together and figuring out how to make things work. So I don't know. I would Okay, no, maybe no. we would last. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. you guys are similar like it's just 
I didn't realize how similar you guys are until just now, but like, cause you both have like this kind of spirit about you. That's like, fuck the rules. Who made up these rules for how we should live? You know, <laughs> like just like things like what, who says it's that big of a deal that I have to wear regular old shoes and not bags? <laughs> <laughs> or like, I feel like, Nicole, you do things all the time that are just like <laughs> things that like a whimsical alien would think were normal. <laughs> I basically just. And it's like, I think why I love both of you so much because it's like such a nice Reminder for me, because I can be a little too dutiful and like a little too rule based sometimes mm -hmm. to be like, oh, you got to pick and choose because most of these are just silly things that people made up for how to live not in a fun way. <laughs> uh, it's funny. The more I do this podcast, the more I talk to my friends and a lot of them are dating versions of me or married to versions of me. Oh, that's so interesting. Like my very good friends, like Sashir, her boyfriend's a lot like me. Ooh. And I was like, how interesting. And I do think I'm a lot like Ben. Yeah. And we're dear friends. Yeah. What a dream. <laughs> what, a, what a dream. It means somebody is out there for me. I just think yes. who, whoever ends up dating you is going to be at, or, and marrying you as your as his forever girlfriend mm -hmm. <laughs> is going to be so lucky because you have such <gasps> an amazing way of, I just love listening to you talk and the way you look at the world and you and I get to watch you do improv a lot and mm -hmm. you more than like m most people like do a kind of improv that looks magic to me because oh, your your you. your brain just uh, does things that I don't know how it does it doesn't so work like other you're, people you're just so <laughs> you're just so smart and yeah. you're there's so many good things about you so oh somebody's going to be very lucky yeah it's what so and it, it's hard I think when you're so good, it's just hard to find someone who like lives up. I really but and I, you yeah. two are so good, and you found each other. It's honestly insane. It's insanely. <laughs> it's like feels so. I feel it truly feels so smug because we just got. I think actually just lucky. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I guess I did want to say like one like thing that I think we did really right mm -hmm. that I've I've heard you. Um. Well, something that I've heard you say in certain episodes of the podcast is you've had like little things like, I don't want to date a person like this. Like you've been in, ah. at times like, I don't want to date a comedian uh -huh. or I don't want to like, you know, I'd rather, yeah, I think you're also like very open-minded, but mm -hmm. you sometimes have like put like little barriers, barriers yeah. to what you, and I think the, one of the only ways Malin and I were able to end up together was throwing away all the things that we had said like were our list of things we were looking for beforehand, because um, I, I think Madeline would have been looking for uh, a taller guy than me, and I would have been looking for somebody who was shorter than me, so I could feel really tall myself. <laughs> Wait, are you taller uh, than Ben? Uh, no, we're exactly the same, same height. height. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I maybe sounded angry for a second. <laughs> <laughs> the we're the same it's height. A, it's a point of Madeline says she's. Uh, we, we are the same height, but Madeline says she's 5'7". I say I'm 5'8". Yeah. It's important to me to be 5'8". Yeah, okay. and I'm not 5'8", but we are the same height. So maybe you're 5'7". <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's true. Like, it was, like, kind of like that, like, stumbling block initially, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when I was like, uh-oh, we got to break up. Um, because on paper, I don't want to be dating a drunk, raving lunatic. <laughs> right, and on paper, like, you didn't want to be dating some, like, I feel like all the other girls Somebody you liked were these like sort of up. like manic pixie dream girls yes. almost. Mm -hmm. These like very like sort of cute, whimsical, like the kind of girls who could kind of like meet you at your most whimsical instead of like I was like I would I like told you like you needed to do better in your math class. Like yes. <laughs> you know, it, we really Really? Uh -huh. Yes, and, and I and then I did. To, I'm not I really... joking when I said I was very serious. <laughs> That's wild. So those it, are the I kind of things that. that I wasn't like I didn't have as an idea of what I wanted, yeah. but ended up being really good for me. And like the thing, the thing that like I think neither of us was willing, or I know I wasn't willing to compromise on was the only thing was just somebody who made me feel my like most comfortable and my most myself. And also like, this seems like, I feel like people say this all the time. Um, so maybe it's like not that interesting, but Ben was the only person who like I just didn't feel like there was any 
chase or any games. And it was confusing because there was none of that sort of rom-com adrenaline rush mm-hmm. of like liking someone more because they're a little bit out of your grasp. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes that I think can trick you into thinking someone is not your soulmate or whatever because we're a little bit poisoned by like TV and movies, uh-huh. you know, and we think that love is sort of lust or we think that love is kind of chasing after something. Mm. And I had had that feeling so many times of like thinking I sort of loved someone because I would idealized them and like, you know, it was such a great story mm. and they were kind of this character of a person who I thought was for me. And Ben was the only person who I met where that so much wasn't the case, but replacing that excitement was like this sort of sense of actual comfort and connection and like bringing out parts of myself that I like hadn't that like really I hadn't experienced almost since I was like a kid or something. It was like Mm -hmm. this, I don't know. It was really, it felt demonstrably different as a feeling than I had felt uh, towards anybody who I kind of, anybody else who I thought like, Ooh, maybe I love this person. (laughs) So, Um, did you have butterflies when you decided you loved Ben or no? Yes, I did. I did have butterflies, but they lasted way less long because I knew. Aye, aye, aye. Well, <laughs> well, they were replaced. <laughs> it was, well, no, no, like, because it was, I like, I mean, I, you know, when we ha- went on our first date, I truly like went to the bathroom and like jumped up and down and did a happy dance because I was like so excited. That's so cute. Um, but I remember like, I don't know, maybe it was like a different kind of butterfly or, or something. It was just, Mm -hmm. it was, it was like the difference between feeling like I was like living a rom-com story and feeling like I was living like my own life and was like, I don't know, like becoming like, again, like sort of meeting somebody, it this is like meeting somebody who I had known forever. I don't know. It was like a like weird... like you were fulfilling your destiny a bit? Yeah. That sounds so cheesy, but kind of, yeah. I like yeah. it. Um, okay. We have to wrap up. I enjoy talking to you. Uh, truly, your relationship is aspiring. Is that a word? Inspiring? Uh, aw- oh, inspiring? No. Uh, is aspiring not a word? It's, Did I just combine inspiring? It's and not, but it could be awesome. It's awesome and inspiring. It's Thank inspiring. You. I love aspiring oh, is a great God. word. Yeah. I don't know what words are anymore. You get to make them. You're a trendsetter. So yeah. if you say aspiring, yeah. now that's going to be trending. Yeah, your relationship is aspiring. <laughs> I stand by it. <laughs> Do you guys have anything you want to plug? I want to plug my on the cusp oh, podcast. Oh yeah, you um, should. It's yeah, I, I did a. Uh, you can go look it up on the cusp on the cusp podcast on iTunes. I did a really fun interview with Nicole. Like yes, 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 it was four fun. years ago. Um, you can look up some other ones I did with people on Madeline and Nicole's uh, search history team. There's a Betsy Sodaro interview. Uh, She's the best. And uh, and a, and a Madeline interview. <laughs> uh, and I'm. Just starting to do new interviews now. Nice, nice, nice. And Madeline, you have a podcast. Oh yeah, it's uh definitely dying. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and it's we're on like a little bit of a hiatus right now. Um, mm-hmm. but we have like a billion old episodes. So if you want to like listen to um, me and Ben Axelrad, another one of your yes. former guests, talk about hypochondriac concerns. Mm-hmm. Um, you can listen to it. And Nic- Nicole was also on that podcast. Yes, yes, yes. I love podcasts. <laughs> if you like this one, you can uh, subscribe and you can rate it. And if you say something uh, silly or salacious and or juicy, I'll read it on this podcast. Wait, let me find one to read. Oh, I should have had this set up. Dang it. Okay, Sarah Leone. So she said, uh, I hope you think it kind when I say I want to get up in your mind. And I hope you don't find it rudy when I say I want to get all up in that booty. Wow. Well, that's, it's a poem. So that was a nice kind of... A nasty poem. I didn't know it could rhyme. Yeah, thank you, Sarah Leone. 
A lot of people are like, if I wasn't gay, (laughs) 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 which is something I get a lot, which is okay. Um, Yeah, people have not been writing nasty things to me. They've only been writing nice things to me. Oh, that's Um, good. But I want nasty things. (laughs) Okay, well, that's it. Bye bye. That was a headgum podcast.